In my last video about chemistry, I mostly discussed element names and why they sometimes don't match their symbols. Today, I will discuss the origins of elements more in depth as well as fulfilling some promises. The first of those promises is explaining why gold is AU on the periodic table. Much like the other name symbol discrepancies I discussed in my earlier video, there's a link to that in the description by the way, it's based on the Latin name for the element aurum. Straightforward, simple, easy to understand. Now, let's go a little deeper. Those who saw my last video know oxygen comes from Greek roots that mean born from acid. Oxos meaning sharp or acidic and genos meaning born from. I might do a whole video on that word genos because it's it leads to a lot of words that you might not think of. But how is oxygen acidic? Well, to make a long story short, in 1774, a French chemist by the name of Lavoisier incorrectly assumed that oxygen was what made acids acidic. Even though, as soon after that as 1812, our aluminum isolating friend Humphrey Davy, along with other chemists, discovered that hydrogen was the compound that made acids acidic, the name had already stuck, and hydrogen means born from water. So, I mean, that still makes sense. Because it does come from the electrolysis of water. And while we're explaining all the gen names from chemicals, nitrogen. What's the nitro in nitrogen? It comes from a word you may not know, nitre, which is also called saltpeter. This is kind of like alum. It's a mineral that was used a long time ago as a cleaning agent. The most common chemical form of nitre is potassium nitrate. So when nitrogen was isolated using nitre, that's where the name came from. Now, moving away from raw elements and more towards the name of compounds, where does the prefix meth come from? Not just the drug. There's a bunch of chemicals that have the prefix meth in them. Methane, methanol. Where does this come from? Well, the way it got into chemistry was through the word methyl. It's a Greek-based compound word made by taking methu, meaning wine in Greek, and uli, meaning wood, together to describe wood alcohol, which is also called methyl alcohol or methanol today. Eventually, as they started naming more and more compounds, they used the meth part to describe anything that had a single hydrocarbon on the end of it. I'll show you kind of what that looks like over here. Um, so it, it, it doesn't exact, like it comes from a word meaning wine, but it doesn't mean that anything that has the word meth in it is an alcohol. It's mostly just an organic chemistry term. But, where does, where do the Greeks get that word for wine? To find out, we're gonna go to a Proto-Indo-European word web. Here we can see that the Proto-Indo-European word for honey slash mead, medu, has led to tons of different words in many languages. In Proto-Germanic it became meduts, which became medu in Old English. and finally mead in modern English. This makes sense with how mead is made, it's fermented honey. This also led to the Greek methu from earlier, which led to the meth prefix in chemical compounds. Like I said earlier, methamphetamine, methane, you get the idea. This Proto-Indo-European root also led to the Russian word medved, meaning honey liquor, which is what they call bears. But you knew that from my Lions, Tigers, and Bears episode I made a long time ago. I knew going into writing the script that mead and meth were related, but what I didn't know is a second Proto-Indo-European word web that I'm about to give you right now. Medu from the Proto-Indo-European came into Tocharian, an extinct Indo-European language that was spoken in West China in the 5th through the 8th centuries AD as the word meat. 
I will discuss the language and history of the Tocharian peoples and culture in its own video. Trust me, that there it goes deep. But for now, that's all you need to know. This influenced late Old Chinese and became the word meat. This also led to the Japanese mitsu, and here I have the kanji and the hiragana, the Korean meal, and the Vietnamese mat. All three meaning honey. I didn't know I was going to East Asia in a chemistry video, but I was. Hope you all enjoyed that little rabbit hole. I didn't expect that to happen, but I thought it'd be fun to show you. It just shows how influential language can be, and how far a word as simple as honey can reach in human history. Thank you for watching Ling King. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and have a great day. Bye-bye.